But let's talk about not the Steelers, not the Bengals, a different AFC North rival. Uh, the Cleveland Browns. Ah, the they, Cleveland Browns. Yeah. They might have actually done it. They may have drafted a quarterback who's actually good. They might and have done it. It just might be, and it might not have been a first round pick. It was yeah, a fifth a, rounder. He's a, a fifth, fifth rounder. rounder out of UCLA, six foot one, Dorian Thompson Robinson. But they, in Brown's fashion, have screwed it up. They have Deshaun Watson still up there <laughs> on uh, Lake Erie Shores. So uh, I guess the question is. A, are you as impressed with Dorian Thompson Robinson as I've been? I think he has been playing very well in the preseason games, arguably the best of all of the rookie quarterbacks, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and, I would probably agree with that, but keep going. B, how short of a leash is Deshaun Watson on? I mean, they've got him on that huge contract, but last year he didn't really do super well. Um, a lot of people said that was because of the rust. He hadn't played in a year. He had all of those legal issues. Uh, he's coming in he, this year. He's going to be elite. Browns fans seem really excited about him. I'm not really nervous about Deshaun Watson as an AFC North fan. If I'm being honest, I don't think he's going to be an issue for the AFC North. Um, I don't think Dorian Thompson Robinson would be either at this point in his career, but I think he could be i think based on what he's done with the second string receivers and the third string receivers it'd be interesting to see what he can do with these first string guys yeah i mean it's 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 i think you hit it like nail on the head right there i don't think deshaun watson is going to be any sort of big major threat coming into the afc north i mean i get all the excuses and stuff like that for Deshaun Watson and stuff like that. But we've had multiple players and, you know, just over the years where they'll get suspended and then they come in and they still play decently. I mean, I can even go back. I think it might've been Alvin Kamara or Mark Ingram multiple, multiple years ago um, when the saints had both of them and one of them was suspended, but whenever they came back, they still lit it up. And I go back to that as just as a small little tidbit of, you know, stat based on that but like i feel like saying oh it's ru he's rusty and he had legal issues yeah yeah i feel like it's just a little bit of an excuse for deshaun watson right now i feel like he should be at a lot better of a player go figure considering he's been on such a high pedestal over the last you know six seven seasons or however many seasons and you know he did well in houston and i get that but even with like those couple of games he played for Cleveland whenever he was back and reinstated and he played in the regular season, he really wasn't all that impressive in my opinion. I don't really think he was anything very special, but DTR, he honestly, as you said, I, I think he looks probably the, arguably the best out of the rookies. I mean, I haven't really been that impressed with Bryce Young. I mean, we'll talk about Anthony Richardson a little bit. Um, can't really see, you know, haven't really seen too much from Stroud and some of these other rookie quarterbacks. I mean, go figure. I mean, DTR, you know, he had, I think, 13 completions out of 25 for like 100 and some yards and no touchdowns or interceptions in the most recent preseason game yesterday. But I think that he has a lot of room to improve. And I think his total stats off the preseason are like 328 yards and two touchdowns, which is very solid considering most of these rookie quarterbacks usually have like 60 yards and an interception. So I really think that, you know, he could be a very solid, solid player over time. And I hope the Browns don't screw it up for their sake, but they probably will. But maybe, but that's just coming from an AFC North guy. That's not, that has nothing to do with me dissing on the Browns organization. Actually it is, but I am an AFC North rival being a Steelers fan. I'm sure, you know, you feel the same way being a Bengals fan. So We'll see what happens, but I think I think DTR has been kind of impressive. Pretty impressed, even with the bad tie game yesterday that I got to witness. It was just it was not <laughs> his, a fun game to watch. I but. was watching I was watching his film before the show, and something that really stuck out to me was his decision making and his ability to put it in a tight window. Um, if he throws the ball, he's going to throw the ball. 
He's not <laughs> like second guessing himself. He's not thinking, oh, wait, mate, this is going to be an interception, which is very uncommon for rookies. I feel like I feel like when we watch rookies, a lot of time, they're still kind of nervous. They're like, I, I don't know if I can make that throw, especially the backups that are fighting for a spot on the team. Obviously, Bryce Young, he's kind of already been told he's going to be the starter. Uh, I think C.J. Stroud, it's pretty much assumed he's going to be the starter, even though he's in that quarterback battle with Davis Mills. Both but, Mills could be better, but... But, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll find out week one who they decide the starter is, maybe before that. But Dorian Thompson-Robinson, DTR, he just... He's not playing against Jalen Ramsey. He's not playing against Sauce Gardner. I get that. But he is also not a starting caliber quarterback right now in the NFL's eyes. So he's already making these throws, fitting it into tight windows, um, making sure he's able to lead his receivers so they have space to get some yards after the catch. I, I think if Kevin Stefanski wants to keep his job, and Sean Watson is not doing well, I think Kevin Stefanski is going to get to a point where he is going to say, all right, Deshaun, I know we're paying you like way too much money in guaranteed deals, but go sit on the bench. Dorian, you're going in. Let's see if we can turn this thing around. Um, And there's this concept of late round quarterbacks they're going to be career backups last year. The quarterback in who led his team to the NFC championship was Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. He, yeah. Brock Purdy. He was literally the last guy picked in last year's draft. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady was a late round pick The where you fall on the draft board. Doesn't matter if you put in the work and you're able to actually like lead your team. That's what you want, especially the Browns because they've had, more quarterbacks than years I've been alive and they they've got nothing to show for it they've got Deshaun Watson who I'll admit was phenomenal back in 2020 when he last played for the Texans 33 touchdowns seven interceptions but last year he was suspended most of the year seven touchdowns five interceptions and he has perpetually tied the Browns to that whole massage lawsuit thing that's going on if he's not giving you wins, why would you keep him on the team? Yeah, it really doesn't. It really shouldn't matter how talented he was five, ten years ago. I, I really think it matters about how well they're producing now. And go figure. If I mean, obviously, I know what the Browns are probably going to do. Obviously, they would. They're not. They're definitely not going to let DTR start week one. Absolutely right. not. I know for a fact it's going to be Deshaun Watson, unless Watson gets hurt sometime in the preseason hurts his little ankle or something and then is out for six weeks. But I think what they would do is I think they would have Watson run through and then they might pull, they might pull a Steelers type thing where if Deshaun Watson isn't producing to that level that they want by like, you know, week four, maybe they're missing out on some like clutch plays. Maybe, you know, they lose to do they, Do you guys play them at a, all in the first couple of weeks? I know we do. I know we play them. Week uh, we two play the Browns three. week one, I believe. Yeah, so we play them on Monday Night Football pretty quickly after you guys play them. So, like, if it's somewhere around there, you know, and they're losing, like, some of these clutch games where it's like, oh, Deshaun Watson starts choking or the Browns just in general start choking, you know, and they're just, like, 0-4 or something, it might be a situation where they might throw in DTR. I mean, granted, I don't know if the Browns will. I don't know where where DTR is going to fall in the depth chart. They might even have him below Dobbs because I think Dobbs is still – on the roster i think that's the the second string quarterback or third string quarterback i don't i think it was um uh dtr dobbs and watson but right now it is actually deshaun watson is the starter joshua dobbs is second kellen mon is third and dorian thompson robinson is fourth okay well i think it would be a really bad move to not have him a little further up in the thing but granted i get fifth round pick I get it you know like I mean it was a different situation in Pittsburgh last year you know you had Kenny Pickett sitting on the bench first round pick like I get it but like if he's producing in the preseason he's doing well like he might actually you know cook with a lot of these like 
relatively better wide receivers in Cleveland. I mean, go figure. I mean, you know, the, he's not going to be working with, you know, Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison over in Minnesota like Kirk Cousins will be, but at least he'll be able to, you know, work with some wide receivers that are even better than the wide receivers that he's been working with in preseason. So, I mean, he has all the potential in the world to develop, and I would not sleep on him because if you sleep on him, you know, he might just end up being the one to cook. But we'll see what Cleveland does. They haven't been the best with quarterback decisions, as we have learned over the last 15 years. But maybe maybe this will be a game changer for them. Maybe, maybe for the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> they will figure out that maybe they benefit from those late round quarterback picks instead of getting those first overall picks. Because, I mean, go figure. I mean, I know Deshaun Kaiser was a second round pick, but you had like Johnny Manziel. You've had a lot of these random uh, quarterbacks come out of, you know, Cleveland and stuff like that, and they just don't do anything. I mean, I yeah. guess besides Manziel, I mean, we talked yeah. about that. I mean, being one of the best over the last 15 uh, years for the Browns. Or, Baker was who, one of the best. Yeah, who did I say? Manziel. Oh, Manziel. No, not Manziel, Baker. <laughs> but no, nah, but like you had Manziel, you had Baker, stuff like that. So Manziel but, was, he's out of football. So how many games, how many games do you give Deshaun Watson? Like just absolutely, let's say he comes out week one and he's just garbage, like three picks. Jordan Battle has three pick sixes on him or something. And Bengals blow them out 58 to six. Out. Trevor Simeon was the quarterback. All of the touchdowns were defensive. It, I... It's completely on Deshaun Watson. It's all his fault. Obviously, that's. It's such like, a bad, that's, yeah. That's I mean, it's such happen, a wild but, hypothetical. But, but um, I'm, I'm just but saying, like, if, he actually, if yeah. he absolutely craps the bed week one, then what do you do week two? And week Whoa. like how how much time do you give him? You're paying him. the The Browns have Deshaun Watson until 2027, Ugh. and they have guaranteed him 230 million dollars with an oh average my. salary of 46 million a year that's terrible why would so, you do that <laughs> why would you do that like i get that he had talent but like why so much like go figure i mean like i understand all the random you know like connections and stuff he's had with you know all that legal uh, legal stuff and those legal battles and stuff but homie has not looked that solid over the last couple of years. I get like in Houston and stuff, he lost Watson or not Watson. He lost uh, DeAndre Hopkins and he, he had lost players and stuff like that. And that team wasn't producing well. He wanted out of Houston. He went to Cleveland, then he got suspended and he had all that stuff happen. But like, he's not as good as he once was. And I get that it's rust, but he is older. And you're also, you're also forgetting he didn't play the entire 2021 20, season before he played last year. Oh, you are right. He, he never played, played in 2020. 2020. He did. With, I believe Hopkins still on the team. Okay. And in 2021, he sat out and had so the legal issues yeah. and stuff. Then in 2022, the Browns signed him to $230 million total guaranteed. Terrible. Terrible. And I think that's, Honestly, what is going to save his starting position? But I think I, Deshaun Watson could come out, do what, do anything. He could go out and throw five interceptions, and the Browns organization would have to say, "We he, he's our guy. We have he, to run with we him. We have to pay him. We gave him the entire salary cap." Well, and, and I think the thing is, is and I did forget about him sitting out. I totally forgot that he was battling all those legal issues and stuff. I thought he had played that season, but. COVID years were just like kind of a blur to me for those seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't barely remember anything, I swear. But um, like Deshaun, like I think the thing was is not only like sitting out and then getting suspended so late in your career and taking off almost like almost practically like let's say hypothetically a year and a half of like only doing reps and not playing. You're, uh, we've learned this with running backs. We've learned this with people just sitting out in general. It doesn't end well. And mm -hmm. so under the circumstances, I understand why, you know, he had sat out and all those different circumstances. But in this specific thing right now that we have going on in Cleveland, it was a terrible move to sign him to that huge of a contract. And if he doesn't produce, obviously, like if he's 230 million guaranteed, regardless if they cut him or not, he's, he's going to get that money one way or another. And it's it's different from like a you know, a Steelers situation where it's like, oh, you have, we signed Mitchell Trubisky. He was our starter. 
but he was only making, you know, like a select amount of money. He wasn't guaranteed two hundred and fifty million dollars. He was only guaranteed like twelve or something. It was it was a very low amount. I was actually kind of surprised at one point. But like but nonetheless, um yeah, I think it was a really bad move. And if they just keep, you know, moving with Deshaun Watson, I'm sorry, Cleveland. Good luck in 2028. Maybe you'll actually do something <laughs> because like, yeah, I, you guys are in a really stuck position. Maybe Deshaun Watson, maybe, maybe if he doesn't cook, maybe he'll decide to retire in the next two years and you guys will get lucky. But right now he is not looking like a hot commodity. So, well, we endorse the starting of Dorian Thompson Robinson here at yes. No Buts About It. Yes, please, please. Yes, I want to see more from Dorian Thompson 